It's time. What is the time you ask? It's time to answer the question I get asked the most, which is what would make the best survival game? Killed one. Set me all attack. Killed another. They don't you don't jump, you kill. Killed another one. All dead. I'm hitting these. Five more C4, five more C4. Yeah! Oh, he's back! Wow, I nice, still got lit on nice fire. windows, Dax! The zombie up here, nobody said anything? Hello? Whoa, Who's at the back? They, they broke all. I'm dead. <laughs> See ya. Before we get fully started, there's there's a sub button down here. You can press it, it's free. Also click that bell, be notified whenever another survival game video uh, goes live from my channel. If you're a survival enthusiast, this is definitely the spot for you. Now that we've taken a little trip down memory lane, uh, just for people that don't know who I am, pretty much I play survival games and lots of them. As you can tell, I have quite the background of playing lots and lots of survival games with lots and lots of hours on each game. So I get asked pretty often, what would be the best survival game? What is your favorite survival game? And I can't answer that question because every survival game has an aspect to it that really draws me in. And if the best survival game were to be created, it'd have to take everything out of every game that I've enjoyed over the years. In my opinion, to become or to be called a survival game, you need three different things. One is a survival elements, obviously eating, drinking. Some games do sleeping, not a huge fan of the whole sleeping stuff. Number two, some type of enemy, some type of thing that you are trying to accomplish while you're surviving. Either it be tribe people from Green Hell, dinosaurs from Ark, or zombies from Seven Days to Die, something to survive against. And three, which is up for debate building. Every single survival game that I've been in has some type of building because you're surviving. You need a home, you need somewhere to stay, either that or reinforcing a house or that type of stuff. I think it's a pretty big aspect when it comes to survival games. And you can kind of throw crafting in there as well, but not every game has crafting. So if I were to choose survival elements from one game, I'd have to choose Green Hell. It's just so expansive on what you can do, what you can craft, what you can build, what you can cook, uh, everything you need to do in order to ban yourself to find the right plant to do the right thing. It's just realistic enough without being too annoying. And I think a survival game that has this as its actual survival element, I guess the way to upkeep your character, this would be the way. Another big element of a survival game is the looting. And as for looting, I have to give the cake to Daisy. As much as it does get annoying not being able to find items in Daisy, that can easily be and has been fixed by mods in different ways. I think their system to not have too much loot is there on purpose because it's supposed to be a hardcore survival game. You're not supposed to find loot, you know, all over the place. But the way that you craft ghillie suits in this game, the way you can spray paint your clothing to blend in with your environment, the amount of limited ammo that you find. Do I use this on a zombie? Do I use it on this person? Steal their loot. If I shoot that guy's jacket, it's going to rip up and break and everything in the jacket's going to rip up and break. It's really a really cool concept if it worked a little better it would be even better but this definitely takes the cake when it comes to looting um which is a huge portion of survival games believe it or not when it comes to environment and things to fight h1z1 for me really does take the cake the zombies in this game were just some of the best that I've ever faced. The AI wasn't incredible. What would be nice is if we could have H1Z1 style hordes and zombies running around, but with the seven days to die AI, I think that would be extremely, extremely cool to see. But the way the, the map flowed in H1Z1, they just set it up really well. A bunch of small buildings in between the large cities. You knew if you went into a large city, you're pretty much gonna meet up with someone, but you could still kind of run around and loot these smaller houses find your hunting rifle before you head into these major cities. The way that the rain and the snow covered the map was just phenomenal. I just liked how it all felt. And if they were to take the environment from this game, 
and then add it to all the other things that I've already discussed and add it to all the things that I'm about to discuss would be the most incredible survival game to ever exist. And then I just wanted to put an honorable mention in here. If this game right here was done correctly, it could have truly, truly lived up to being one of the greatest survival games of all time. You're looking at Survive the Nights right here, one of the biggest upsets in the survival industry. If you guys are survival game enthusiasts, you would know how upset this game is. Still being developed, I have my fingers crossed, but the environment, very similar to H1Z1 in this game, but the mechanics of the guns and stuff were just a little bit cooler than H1Z1. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that we get a little bit more Survive the Nights in our future, and I'd like to see this game come to fruition. For building and crafting, I just have to give the cake to Seven Days to Die. Some people might consider Ark in there somewhere, but I just feel like the whole system with Ark and Rust is all very similar. You build a wall, you put down the wall. You know, I kind of like the voxel-based building because you can you have a lot more freedom on what you can do and what you can build and how things are being put together. With Ark, you kind of ended up eventually getting like a mod that would help you build, and then the game started to introduce new stuff but it's just not the same of the expansiveness of what you can do in this game when it comes to building. And I'm even gonna give them crafting as well. I'm gonna say pre-alpha 17 or 16 crafting, uh, where you had individual rifle parts and then those rifle parts would go together to create a, you know, if you had level 400 rifle parts, you'd get a level 400 sniper and it would kind of take the average. I preferred that when it came to crafting weapons and crafting all of your other things like your nail gun and crafting all that type of stuff they obviously changed that in 17 into like a more durability system which kind of dumbed it down which i didn't like but the pre-alpha 17 16 system was pretty much superb when it came to that so then there's kind of like some behind the scenes elements of survival games that aren't necessarily you know crucial to a survival game but people do like to see and those three things is one PVP, player versus player. We already have the PVE element from H1Z1. Everybody wants to face other people and steal loot. Maybe not everybody. Me specifically, I like to have some PVP elements into the game. Two, the story. Uh, story is kind of for me nice as a YouTuber. I like to have a beginning and an end when it comes to a series. It's hard to play a survival game where you have to make your own fun when you're 50 episodes deep. It's nice to have the end of a story and then have something else come out. And then three, inventory management. Inventory management has always been something in survival games that I personally don't think anybody has done right. I just hate organizing my bins. I hate trying to figure out stuff. If anything, Minecraft has done it pretty good, but there's one other game that I think does it better. For me, the best PvP out of all the survival games when it comes to raiding and when it comes to actual player versus player, I have to give it to Rust. Rust just feels the most natural when it comes to the way the guns work. You don't want laser beam guns that are so super easy to use, as much as obviously there's been patches in Rust that have caused guns to be that way. Normally speaking, you still have to learn the recoil, you still have to be pretty good at the game in order to, you know, be able to kill a bunch of people. And the way that the crafting system works makes it so it's not too crazy easy, similar to like ARC, to make C4 and to make rockets and that type of stuff. Also, I like the primitive gunfights early on, or primitive bow fights better, uh, much better than the way uh, kind of ARC does the early primitive game stuff. You can get guns real, real early in ARC. I, I feel like I'm kind of trashing on ARC, but at the same time, I still enjoy it. I just wish they did it a little bit better to catch up to how Rust does it. But meanwhile, when it comes to story, Ark definitely, definitely takes the cake. I don't know any other game where the ending literally gave me physical goosebumps on the, on the outside and made me swell up on the inside. I just loved this game so much. The dinosaurs are super, super fun. I would love for my ideal survival game to have some type of taming in it from Ark. I don't know if dinosaurs really fit into like a zombie survival game, which is more my vibe. Uh, but the story in this game takes the cake through and through. They do it perfectly because it's not something that you focus on while you're playing the game, but it is still an end goal. Green Hell comes in close second because the story is, is more built into the game. But when it's too built into the game, it feels more linear than it does feel open world survival. But this, the ending and the story of this game 
really is everything. You're just looking at it right here, and if you haven't played the game before, I recommend at least going out and watching most of the cinematic scenes. You can watch them on my channel or anybody else's channel. But this game just has the best story that has ever existed in a survival game. Uh, the Forest is another honorable mention. When it comes to story, it's just kind of preference. And when it came to Ark, I just think I had my most of my time invested in this game over years and years. And by the time I got to the end of the story, it was just so cool to see. And I'm so looking forward to the new DLC where they're gonna expand on that story. Although this is not a survival game, when it comes to inventory management, you have to give it to Escape from Tarkov. I just love the system to uh, the way you pick up things, the way the backpack sizes work, the way you can rotate items and the way that you can fold the stock to make it fit into your backpack better. It just feels like it makes more sense. It's not just a bricky system. It's not one item takes up one slot. Bigger items take up more slots. And like I said, folding the stocks of the gun takes up less slots. It's just a system that feels enough realism to it without being too clunky. I mean, it's very hard to get used to, but once you get used to it, it's an extremely expansive system. And if any survival game that I played, especially one that had PVP elements in it, this is what I'm gonna take it from. It's not a survival game, but the actual inventory management system and the way that the vault works is just perfect. On top of that, I hear really great things about the new update with the hideout system. I gotta check that out. So that's gonna do it. Uh, just as a breakdown of all of the different types of games and all of the different elements from those games that would create the best survival game, in my opinion, is the survival elements from Green Hell, the looting elements from DayZ, the zombies and the environment from H1Z1, the building and the crafting from pre-Alpha 17, Seven Days to Die, player versus player from Rust, the story from Ark, and the inventory management system from Escape from Tarkov. A lot of different things from a lot of different games, and if you have any other opinions on what survival game may be better in any of those different genres, go ahead and pop down below in the comment section and give me your opinions. Any developers out there that want to create the best survival game to ever exist in my brain, I'm right here. I could be a guy to tell you what to do. I don't want to do anything, but I can tell you what to do. Thank you for watching to the end. If you did, please leave a like on this video. Remember to subscribe down below for pretty much any survival game under the sun. Pretty much that's what my channel does. And uh, if you made it this far, you must enjoy survival games. I love you all and we'll see you soon. Also, just to squeeze it in at the end, if you want to watch any of the games that I mentioned, there's playlists down below with hundreds and hundreds of episodes. Also, on top of that, I stream on Mixer now. Mixer.com slash Go follow.